welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Steph and I make videos on lots of different aspects of my life, but most recently on career stuff. So I'm a historian turned software engineer. And in this video, I wanted to talk about how it was that I went from zero lines of code to now being a software engineer. If you're just starting this journey of trying to transition careers and you wanna know about how someone else has done it, then keep on watching. <laughs> For this video, I thought a lot about how it was that I was able to succeed in my goal of transitioning from academia to software engineer in such a short amount of time. And if I were to think about the main reasons for how I was successful, then these five reasons would be it. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Number one, I think it's super important to recognize that I already have a college degree and I have nothing against those who are trying to get a job as a software engineer without going to college. I totally respect that, but I do think it's important to know that a lot of companies still really care about traditional academia. And I know that's not the case for every company out there and that it's totally possible for you to still get a job, but I think in my personal opinion and from talking to people and what I've observed, it can be really challenging if you don't have a BA degree. I mean, in any field. Mine is in history, so it's not related at all. I don't have engineering, math, computer science background, but just having the d degree I think is what helped me to land a job. The second reason for how I think I was able to do this is doing the boot camp. There's different routes to, you know, transitioning into web development or software engineering, um, software development, whatever you want to call it. There's different names for for this field, but I think like there's different routes to getting there, right? You could you know, learn on your own through watching YouTube videos or some of those free um, programs like Code Camp, Free Code Camp, I think is one of them, the Odin Project. And I could put links to these as well because they're great resources and you can absolutely learn all this material on your own. That's one option. Another option is doing a boot camp. Another option is doing a more formal thing like getting a CS degree. The boot camp helped me a ton. Like, I don't think. I would have been able to do this on my own because the bootcamp provided me with a structure for what I needed to know to land my first job as a junior developer. I think if I was do studying on my own, I would have, you know, probably learned a lot, but maybe would not have known exactly the kinds of things I needed to to know to land the job. Of course, a bootcamp cannot teach you everything. You're not going to come away at the end of a bootcamp like being an expert in anything, trust me. But you're gonna know enough to where you can start a job and feel confident and comfortable with what you do know and uh, recognize that you're constantly going to be learning on the job. Of course, I have to recognize that I had the privilege of having enough funds to be able to afford the bootcamp. My bootcamp cost $10,000, which is a lot of money. Um, there's better boot camps out there probably that are more expensive. I'm sure there are also cheaper ones as well. But I also had the privilege of having the time available to do a boot camp for three months. And if you're interested in knowing more about my experience in the boot camp and I talk about some of the decision making and things I wish I would have known before starting, then check out this video right here where I review the Georgia Tech bootcamp that I did. And I also talk about things I think are applicable to bootcamps in general. So in case you're interested in other ones, I still think that video could be helpful, helpful for you as well. The third reason of how I think I was able to do this is having a support network. You're going to need friends that understand that while you're in this transition, it's stressful. You're not going to be able to hang out as much because you're going to be busy studying you know, preparing for interviews, doing all the stuff that you need to in this really like difficult time. Be prepared for that and make sure that you have a support network. I think just having friends and family that understand what you're trying to do is super helpful. Um, get a therapist if you think you need one. I think everybody needs a therapist. It can be really helpful just for like 
talking, having someone to talk to you about the transition that you're doing, making sure that you're staying sane and taking care of your mental health through it all as well. But in addition to like having the ment mental emotional support, I think for me personally, what helped me a lot was having the support of my husband who knows how to code. That was huge for me, especially in the beginning. So he's not a, he's not necessarily a web developer or like he doesn't work in um, the same field as I do now. Um, but so he's an academic, he's a, an industrial engineer and he knows Python. So he codes for his research. And so he uses um, programming for like a really particular purpose, no, knows nothing about building websites, but still him having like that programming like knowledge. When I was first learning, for example, I was really confused about for loops in the beginning. Like it's like a really basic concept now to me, but like in the beginning it was like, I don't understand this is so confusing. and. It's one of those things in a boot camp. Like, if you don't understand something in the beginning, you're gonna get so lost throughout because everything is gonna build off of these concepts. And just having someone to be like, here's what it is, like, explain it to me, like, over and over, and have the patience to help me work through, like, things that I was struggling with, like, the basic concepts early on, I think was really helpful for me and in, in my learning and um, ensuring that I was able to get through the program. I mean, you, the program that I did, at least, there's a TA, there's like a, there's the instructor, and you also have a um, a tutor that you meet with twice a week. So there's definitely other resources that you can have built into the program. But I think for me, it was like I needed that extra help, probably because I came in with zero knowledge and background in it. So um, so yeah, it's just one of those advantages that I definitely have to recognize when thinking about retrospectively, how did I do this? The fourth thing that I think really helped me get to where I am now is preparation for the job market. I prepared intensely for the job market and I think that's what you really need to do if you wanna have multiple job offers, right? If you just wanna take the first job that's gonna get you like average pay, that's one thing, but if you want to get a good job and you want to do your best, like you have to prepare intensely when you're going to be getting ready to apply for these jobs. You need to make sure that you know your stuff. You need to make sure that your materials are on point. Make sure that your LinkedIn looks good, your website, you know, functions, all the links work. You pro provide examples of everything, of all your projects. You talk about what you did, what you learned from it. Um, I could put um, my own website as an example if you want to see in the description. I think it, it's important that your website looks good. Even though you're a programmer not a UX designer, I still think people are going to judge you if you have some like clashing colors and it looks like trash. Like <laughs> It might function and everything, but if it doesn't look good, that's going to that's gonna be a problem, I think. That's my personal opinion. I think everything that you submit has to look good and be nearly perfect. Your GitHub, you know, once you finish the bootcamp before you start applying for jobs, this is what I did at least. I went back to my GitHub, I went back to project one. I went back to the very first things, very first repos I created and refactored that stuff to make sure that my code was not repetitive or that, that it was efficient and stuff that I could be proud of. Even if it was like week two material, by week 10, you could probably rewrite your week two material to make it look stronger, right? So go back and make those edits and make sure that everything you present on GitHub is also on point. And I'm glad I did that because in interviews, guess what? I got asked questions about things that were on my GitHub. So they are looking at your GitHub as well. Resume, there's certain formatting things. You should just look it up and have a professional look over your resume because you don't want to have things like tables and certain fonts and colors. That was one mistake I had. It made it look too cute. It needs to look really plain. It needs to look plain. But it has to have the key information there that needs to be there. I did talk a little bit about LinkedIn. The job I currently have actually applied for using LinkedIn Quick Apply, so that does work. Um, LinkedIn is also important. Make sure everything on there is on point. And yeah, so aside from materials, um, just preparing for those interviews. 
behavioral interviews, you want to sound like you're having a conversation, you're relaxed, you're chill, but you've actually practiced those answers like hundreds of times. That's the key. Practice, practice, practice. Everything is like super rehearsed, but it sounds like you're saying it for the very first time. You got to practice that. So yeah, so there's the behavioral interviews, the technical interviews. Man, I created at the end of my boot camp a not just me, but I worked with some other women from my bootcamp to create a study group. So we met once a week after the bootcamp was over. We worked on coding problems together. We did these like coding challenges with each other and that was really helpful. Like find a group where you can support one another and um, continue learning and prepping for those interviews because the problems can be pretty hard on some of them. So just make sure that you're as prepared as you can be so that you can present yourself in the best possible light that you can. And number five, last but not least, is just having confidence and believing in yourself. It is amazing when you have other people in your life, friends and family who believe in you. But at the end of the day, you have to believe in yourself. You have to believe that you're smart enough because you are, you are smart enough, you are capable, you can do it and you can be successful. And you have to believe that. One tip that I have is affirmations. I got this tip from my therapist actually. Um, I listen to affirmations every morning when I wake up. I have Alexa play them for me because you know, I'm a little bit sleepy in the morning. Um, I like to just listen to them and say them in my head. And I actually created the affirmations for myself, recorded myself. I'll actually put a link in the description in this video if you're curious about my positive self-talk. But you don't have to follow any kind of like formal podcast or anything. You can just say affirmations to yourself frequently, I would say daily, and it's super helpful for just helping you, you know, reinforce that self-confidence and self-belief because you can do it. everyone those are my main kind of reflections on how i got to how where i am right now hope this video was helpful for you if it was please subscribe to my channel i'm super close to a thousand subscribers and it's super exciting and um, i could really use your support so please subscribe like this video share it with anyone you think might benefit from it anyone who you think might be going through this transition as well. All right, well, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.